Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part two of my Excel automation series, taking data from Access and putting it in Excel with automation. So you can do crazy things like formatting and stuff like that. So if you haven't watched part one yet, go watch part one, then come on back. All right, so yesterday we did the stuff to set up our Excel worksheet, right? Create the file and then close it all up. Now in the middle, we got to do stuff. Okay, so first, before we do actually do, do stuff, we're going to set up our connection to our table or query. So set RS, our record source, equals, a record set, excuse me, equals current DB dot open record set record source. Not to be confused with the record set. We have a record set object, right? And if you've gone through my record set video, you know exactly what that is. That can point to a table or query. Record source is the name of whatever we're opening up, which in this case is customer T. All right, so the first thing we need is to get the names of the column headers for Excel, which are going to be the same as the field names in Access. All right, so we'll put in here column headers. How are we gonna do that? Well, every field in a record set has a field name property. So we just need to know which one it is. So we're gonna say for L, that's our long, equals zero to rs dot fields dot count minus one. What does that mean? Well, there's a field count property in a record set that tells you how many fields there are, all right? And it's a zero based index. So that means it goes from zero to N minus one. Okay, so if there's 10, it goes from zero to nine. So we're just gonna loop through those, all right? Next, L. And in here, we're going to say Excel sheet, sheet, sheet dot cells. This is how you make a direct reference to a particular cell in the spreadsheet. Okay. It's going to be row one comma L plus one location. So if we're on field zero, right, it's going to be cell one comma one, right? L plus one. If it's the next one, if it's first name, which would be the second column, right? It'll be row one, comma, two, right? L plus one. So we're gonna just loop through all those. We're gonna set the value of that cell equal to rs dot fields L dot name. So whatever uh, field we're on, its name is gonna be put into that cell. Make sense, are you with me? All right, so if we're looking at this, L goes from zero to whatever the count of the number of fields is, right, minus one. So the first one's gonna be customer ID. That's gonna be L equals zero, right? So in the sheet, we're always in row one. That's the first thing, it's, it's row, comma, column, right? So L plus one is one, right, we're at zero. Its value is going to be whatever the current L field is, which is zero. Its name is customer ID, All right? Go to the next one, now L is one. So now we're looking at first name. So cell one comma two is gonna be first name and then last name and then email and then address. See how all that works? Okay. Now again, I like to do this in pieces so I can see everything working. So we created the record set here. We did the column headers. Here, we're gonna export the data, but we're gonna get to that in a minute. But now let's just, let's just close up the record set so we can see what we got and make sure it's working so far. All right, so we're gonna do uh, RS dot close and we're gonna set RS equals nothing. And this will be part of our, our, our cleanup area. We'll, put the, we'll call this cleanup. Okay, so here's all our Excel stuff. In fact, we're gonna put this together with that stuff. All right, here's all the creating a bunch of stuff and the destroying a bunch of stuff. And you gotta destroy it in the reverse order with which you created it. So the Excel app goes first, it's the last thing to be destroyed, right? First in, last out. All right, so right now it should create the Excel sheet it's gonna create a worksheet or a workbook object, a sheet object, a record set object, set the column headers, and then exit and clean up. All right, you ready? Okay, one step at a time, we're gonna do this. All right, come back over here. We don't need you. All right, close it. Actually, let's give it a debug compile, right? Debug compile, all right, good. Back over here, open her up, and hit the button. And, oh, look at that. And that's sexy, look at that. There's all of our field names from 
our table. And I'm just going to select all of these and double click on one of them. And we'll, I'll show you how to auto do this later. So it automatically fits the columns to their widths. But there you go. All right, we're cooking with gas. We're getting somewhere. We got the column headers in there. All right, close that. Save changes. No, we'll save it later. We'll save it in our code too. Okay, we're ready for the next step. All right, we're going to say RS move first. You don't always have to do that because by default, when you open a record set, you should be on the first record. But it's, it's nice to do. Just make sure. Okay, now we're going to use our R variable to track what row we're on. So we're going to set R equals 2 because the first row, R1, is going to be our... Huh, it's going to be R pirates. You might think that R is a pirate's favorite letter, but it's not. It's the C. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to start at row two and just use that as an incrementer so we know what row we're on. Okay, now we're going to loop until we're at the end of the records. Okay, so while not rs.eof, do some stuff. Okay. And then inside of your loop, don't forget, very important, rs.move next. And then we're going to say r equals r plus 1 just to increment our counter. I always like to put the rs move next and the while end inside my while loop. I probably should have mentioned while loops as a prerequisite for this. So if not, if you're not familiar with while loops, go watch this guy. Usually I assume by the time we get the record sets and all that stuff that you're familiar with the basic loop types and an if-then statement and things like that. So if not, I got videos on all this stuff. It's on my website. Go watch it. Come on back. That's the beauty of online learning is if you're not familiar with something, you can pause the video, go watch something else, and then come back to it. It's not like taking a college course where you got to go, oh, wait a minute. I got to go sign up for this class. I'll see you next semester. <laughs> okay. Now in here, we have to go through the fields again in my table and send those out to the corresponding cells in Excel. It's going to look very similar to the stuff we did up here. All right, we're going to reuse that L variable. Since we're done with it, we can use it again. That's fine. We don't need multiple variables. So for L equals 0 to RS fields count minus 1, same thing, next. Okay, now right here, we're going to say something very similar. In fact, um, I'm going to copy this. It's pretty much the same thing as this with one little change, right? That cell's value is not the cell, not the field's name, but the field's value, right? We're doing the exact same thing we did before, except instead of putting the name in the cell, I want the actual value in this record in that field, okay? And that's pretty much it. Let's get rid of this. And I think... We are good to go. I think that's pretty much, that's the core of it. Let's see. Let's save this. Let's give it a debug compile. Let's come back over here and give it a test. Ready? Click. And. Okay. All right. Oh, what's happening? It, it, did you see what's happening? It's doing it all in the same, in the same row. I know what I did. I know what I forgot. Let's not save that. I know what I forgot. I, this is, uh, this is, I'm leaving this mistake in the video because this is something that I've done a million times. You copy some code from somewhere else without logically running through it in your head. Now what's happening here that it's putting all the data in row one? That guy, I forgot to update that because I just copied and pasted. I, I'm guilty of that myself, of taking old code that I know works, copy, paste it into a new location without running through everything in your head and that happened, right? Because I just used this code. But you know, once you see the mistake, it's easy to fix. All right, save it. Let's try it again. Go. And oh, there it is. That's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And when it's all done, you get a beep and there's all your records. And yeah, these just don't fit. So we need to make it so that these guys automatically fit when we're done. We want, I want Excel to do the same thing that I just did earlier, where I select all those cells and do that to it. All right? And then everything fits nicely. All right, how do we do that? Well, let's close this again. Save changes? No. All right, that's something we're going to come in here. And when we're done putting this stuff in here, we're going to say Excel sheet dot columns. And then inside of here, we're going to say A colon Z. That basically in a nutshell says select all the data in the sheet. That's, what, that's kind of what that means. All right, and then we're going to say dot auto fit like that. All right, we're going to auto fit the, uh, the data, the sheet. Okay. Save it again. Always good to throw in a debug compile. One more time. You ready? Go. 
Okay, it's filling its stuff in, and done. Look at that. You see that? And the last thing it did was it auto-fit all the columns. And yes, you can use automation to manually set column widths and all that stuff. Like if you want to make sure your notes don't go crazy long, you can do that with it. Okay. Um, now, we've got all the data out here, but one of the whole reasons to do this in the first place was to add some formatting. Right? We could get this with a simple Excel export. I want to be able to take this first column and left align it. And I want to take the first row and maybe add a background color and a foreground color like that, right? And do some formatting with it. How do we do that? Well, we'll talk about that in, let's see, today's what? Friday, the 24th of May, 2024. So we're going to talk about this in Monday's video. Nope, I lied. I take that back. Monday is a holiday. It's Memorial Day here in the United States. So we're going to cover this on Tuesday, Tuesday, the 28th of May, 2024. So come back then. Yeah, I know it's not it's not tomorrow, but I, I'm just I'm keeping the slide. I like the slide. Tune in tomorrow. Same bad time, same bad channel. Okay. If you remember, you can watch it right now because I'm going to record it as soon as I'm done with this one. But that's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. Have a good holiday weekend if you're here in the United States. The rest of you have just have a good weekend. <laughs> and I'll see you on Tuesday the 28th for part three. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down at the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered.
And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.